Being primarily a Strat or S-style guitar player, I rarely thought about the difference an amp can have on my playing until I was a few years into gigging. Part of it was just me being naive and being like, man, my sound is huge tonight, not thinking that, like, well, yeah, I'm going into a 4x12 cab instead of a 1x12 cab. And it's partly that if you plug a Strat or S-style guitar into something, it generally sounds like a Strat or S-style guitar, just with a slightly different EQ. In my opinion, it's a little bit harder with a Strat to plug straight into an amp and then make some sort of sound that an experienced guitar player would go, whoa, what kind of guitar is that? What surprised me so much when I got my S2594 was that it took on a very different characteristic depending on the amp I plugged into. To me, when I plug the Silver Sky into a Deluxe, a Twin, a Super Reverb, it really retains its identity just fine with a slightly different EQ. But to me, if I split the neck humbucker and the 594 to try to replicate a single coil and plug it into those three, it's a very different guitar each time. Let's take a quick listen to the Silver Sky in those three amps and then the 594 into those three amps to really hear the difference. Now to be fair, most of my playing history has been on 25 and a half scale length guitars. So maybe I'm just naive to the fact that shorter scale length guitars really change depending on the amp, I don't know. Also to be fair, the 594 is a little bit different than other short scale guitars because I can split both humbuckers, getting quite a bit more sounds and a lot more things to experiment with with different amps. I recently got my guitars from the US and it's been a wonderful reunion, especially with that 594 because I only got it a couple months before I left. I really enjoyed the sound of that guitar and I thought I had it sort of figured out, but when a student of mine asked me about Morgan AC20 amps and I pulled up a model of one in my Fractal, I heard a side of my 594 that was completely foreign to me and that I don't hear that often. A lot of the times the split sound on the 594 can sound a little bit weak for single note lines and is better for strumming, but into the Morgan AC20 I actually preferred it for almost everything. got me thinking about how when I would choose an amp to buy, I would mainly be thinking about price, weight, and a name I recognize. Weirdly, last would be the overall sound and how it affects my playing. In my head, it would be like, it just needs to sound good, but a lot of amps sound good. I love playing through Fender Twin Reverb amps, but they're also pricey and incredibly heavy, so I was like, guess I just won't have that sound. I ended up with a Tweed Blues Junior because I asked someone, hey, what's reliable and lightweight and sounds good? and they recommended that amp. If I was more diligent, I would have plugged into a whole bunch of amps, thought about how I wanted to sound and how that amp might pair with my guitars to help me get that sound. Maybe I would also do a deep dive on some of my favorite guitar players whose tone's a bit in the ballpark of what I'm going for, and I would look at what kind of gear they're using. Back when I was using amps more often, there seemed to be two different kinds of amps you could get. If you wanted to cover a lot of ground, you might go with like a Hot Rod Deluxe or something that's a really good pedal platform 
and will change its personality if you have really high personality pedals going into it. If you didn't care about covering a lot of ground though, maybe the previously mentioned twin reverb would be the way to go, because it has a lot of personality as soon as you plug in. In the age we're in now though, I'd highly recommend getting a modeler or a profiler or some plugins and doing some recording with the different amps. Try to have some fun and experiment, like if you have a Strat and a Marshall, can you dial in a Jeff Beck sound? And if you have a Les Paul and a Marshall, can you dial in a Slash sound? And most importantly, can you build a knowledge of how these different amps interact with your guitars to help you chase that tone in your head? Then, if you want to go shopping for a real amp, you can make a really informed decision and will probably be like, oh yeah, that one, I want that one. Which is kind of where you'd want to be because amps are pretty pricey. For me personally, I like to use a wide variety of amps or some hilarious setups like Eric Johnson's where he has like two twins for his clean tone and then two Marshalls, one for medium gain, one for heavy gain. Complicated setups that are just easier with a modeler. Not to mention tremendously cheaper. So unless you're already totally happy with your tone, you know, if there's something missing, then maybe this week get some plugins and experiment. Sometimes making a list helps, like, oh, I really like 2x12s instead of 1x12s. Oh, I really like this brand over that brand, whatever. If you find anything super fun and happen upon any cool new tones or you're like, oh, I've been waiting for that, please let me know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next week.